What is going on, guys? Welcome back. We are back. Had some technical difficulties, but we got them squared away. We're going to have a show this Monday and next Monday. There's no UFC to preview, but people did want us to talk about John Jones and Dominic Reyes. Jimmy, it's hard for me to get excited about a John Jones fight anymore because I've came to the conclusion that at this point, much like the Patriots, as much as I don't want to see them win, it's probably going to happen. And at some point, I just need to sit back and enjoy history, right? Like, that's how this plays itself out. I hate that analogy, but it's true. I guess because I hate it, 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 it makes a lot of sense. Where the only thing that's going to get the Patriots is father time. Tom Brady's just going to get old and not be able to throw anymore, and that's it. You just kind of have to wait for, you know, nature to take its course, right? There is no great team that's going to unseat the Patriots. The, the only thing that's going to happen is they're just going to get a little old. Uh, Belichick's going to get a little older, and they're going to fall by the wayside. John Jones, I think, is at that point in his career where if he loses to Dominic Reyes, say Dominic Reyes steps in there and starches him, John Jones just got old. Now, he's young. He's 32 years old. I don't mean old in the years, but just the mileage. You know, he's been through a lot of fights. He's been champion for a long time. He's had a lot of title defenses. Nothing from this point, I think, diminishes his legacy inside the octagon, right? He, you know, it's it's Muhammad Ali was told one time, mountains don't grow any higher. It's not technically true, but you get the point. You're already a mountain. You're not going to get any better had he beaten Trevor Burbick, okay? That, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I think with John Jones, everything adds to his legacy, you know, just the sheer numbers, but I don't think anything at this point can detract from it. The only thing that beats him is father time. Yeah, I mean, I read a lot that it's his motivation. And maybe that's the problem. He's came out in the past and questioned how motivated he's been to fight. And that's an interesting debate to have because when you go back and look at some of his fights, you, you can't really see motivation, right? It's one of those tangible things where either they have to tell you or you have to learn later something else was there. And really, to me, when I look back at John Jones, the only fights that truly concern me where the Ovin Save Proof fight, where he just did not look himself, and the first Gufteson fight, where I'll tell you, this is part of where me falling off the cliff of John Jones losing starts, because I was so certain that he lost the first Gus fight, that the second Gus fight, I really thought was almost a foregone conclusion that he was going to lose. But to be honest, he looked much better in that second Gufteson fight than he did in the first. And it seems like he has a way of not just silencing critics, but coming out and putting on a performance where you really can't even criticize anymore. Outside of this, you know, and I guess we should probably be clear, a lot of this comes outside the Octagon. We, we all know outside Octagon, real person John Jones has problems. But as far as when we're talking about a fight now, at least for me personally, the narrative has become John Jones, the athlete. For better or worse, give the man some type of credit where he probably doesn't deserve too much. The past year, he's really set all that aside, compartmentalized his life, focused on being a fighter, and put on some really good performances in the meantime. Yeah, if there's been an issue through his career performance-wise in the octagon, remember that's always our caveat, is he can have a tendency to play down to the opposition. Right. Didn't have a great performance against OSP. Didn't have a great performance against Thiago Santos, to say the least. Uh, solid but unspectacular against Anthony Smith. Blows away DC. Blows away Gustafson. When he wants to, it's almost like, like if you're old enough to remember a, a prime Michael Jordan, it was almost like when he decided to score 40 points, he did. Now, he didn't always decide to, but it almost seems like with the truly great athletes in their prime, it's a switch inside them. Now I'm going to outdistance you. It's like a Usain Bolt in his prime in the Olympics. He almost looked at the field and went, okay, now I'm turning it on and left guys in there in, in his dust, in his dust. And you kind of get that feeling with John Jones. The, the fight against Thiago Santos, which is a fight that concerned me, he seemed uninspired unmotivated, didn't seem to realize the danger he was in, in my opinion. And it led to a very, very close fight. So the issue to me with John Jones is his, his, this next generation, Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos, Dominic Reyes, 
I think he was very motivated for that first generation. He wanted to wipe out Jackson, Hua, Machida, Evans, Belfour. All these guys had legacies in the division that are much older than he was. He was looking at guys with real, real name value, and he wanted to kick their ass. He, that whole generation is gone. And this new generation of tough fighters, skilled fighters, well-rounded fighters who don't have a ton of name value, no disrespect to Anthony Smith and Tiago Santos. They just didn't have the cachet of an ex-champion, of a former pride champion, of somebody who, who's who been whooping ass for years and comes in. They don't have that name value. And so a lot of times I think if there's one downside to John Jones at this point in his career, I don't know how motivated he is to wipe out a whole new generation of 205ers. Do you feel that he's the only one that beat, you know, TOG Vitor? I mean, I hate to bring it up, but when I go back and look, it seems like he's the only one that really got TOG Vitor out who, I mean, listen, for what it's worth, was probably the scariest guy in the whole UFC for a little bit of time there. Yeah, but I think Vitor is really at his scariest uh, at 185 pounds. I think by the time he took on John Jones, he just he just wasn't a natural 205er. I don't think he was ever a natural 205er. Um, if you look at his heavyweight fights early in the UFC, he's maybe he's 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 two five size. He's maybe two ten, two twelve, and it looks like he's got pillows glued to his neck. He's just juiced out of his head. He's gigantic, and so I think his natural weight class is one eighty five. He was never a knockout puncher at two hundred five. He was a volume guy. He stunned you and then unloaded. One eighty five hit you with one shot and just flattened your ass. So I think that's where he's at his most dangerous. Um, even TRT Vitor. 205 is just out of his range. He can't, he couldn't physically compete with John Jones. The other thing that's always struck me as somebody that puts, you know, a lot into what Chael Sonnen has to say, it's interesting that Chael seems to be one of the most vocal proponents of, hey, I didn't want to fight John Jones again. Of all the guys I wanted one back against, John Jones was the guy I knew. He was just better. And you don't often have in this sport, not, not so much of ego. But of just pure competition, somebody come out and say, listen, th this guy is just plain better than I am. I'm willing to admit it, and I don't want to fight him again. So when I look at, you know, the legacy that he's building, it's interesting that a lot of that legacy isn't really built upon what he did, but almost what others have said about him. Because a lot of things that get said about John Jones don't really go hand in hand with positive things said about other fighters. Quentin Jackson said, I was in awe of this kid. He used those words. I was in awe. Now, here's a behind-the-scenes story. I was doing PBC Boxing, and Steve Farhood, who is a boxing genius, in my opinion, uh, literally wrote the ring encyclopedia of boxing. We were interviewing a fighter. I forget who it was. And if I could remember, I wouldn't name him. I'm not going to out anybody. But he had gotten his ass whooped in his last fight. And by a, a superior boxer. I forget who it was. And he's talking about, oh, you know, I didn't have a great camp and this and that. And, you know, but, you know, I think I beat him again. And he gets up and he walks out of the room and Farhood turns to me and he says, you know, on the however, 50 years I've been covering boxing, you know what I've never spoken to? And I said, what? And he goes, a boxer that lost a fight. And it's something you're running into all the time in combat sports. They hardly ever go, dude was better than me. The guy was just better. And and I, I've called how many fights? I mean, thousands of fights. And I've seen guys get their ass whooped for 25 minutes straight and go, oh, you know, I had this, this and that and, you know, this and that. And I'm like, dude, the guy was just better than you. He beat you in every way you could have gotten beat. You didn't you couldn't beat that guy if you, 99 times he beats you 99 times. And yet there's there's some mental block, and you're right. It's competitive people. It's it's guys with egos. It's whatever you want to call them that, that just can't accept that. John Jones, any rational observer of combat sports, and I understand the negatives of his PED history and all those things. I understand that completely, the moral objection. He's a level better than, I think, two generations of fighters. You could say three even. It's a matter of when that runs out. I don't think the current generation ever catches up with him. I think he just gets worn down by the sheer number of camps. And that's it for him. But you're right. So few fighters can look themselves in the mirror and go, you got outclassed. He was just straight up better than you. But it's often the case. 
So, I mean, it's like we've kind of talked about, very difficult to kind of look ahead and see things that are meaningful. You know, it's almost like we're waiting for the ledge and we know the ledge is there. Part of me hopes that, you know, maybe he'll kind of pull away before he hits that point. But I guess with that said, is there a fight really that you are looking forward to? Is there a name that would reinterest you into him fighting? I personally, I, I would say I don't want to see a third run at, at DC. It's just, it's a little bit much. I don't think DC is going to make the, the cuts or whatever would have to happen for that to take place. I think at this point, I'm just kind of not even eagerly awaiting the next name, but just knowing that the end is further, or excuse me, the end is closer than the beginning in this. So every fight is a more calculated risk for him, but those risks are, are getting higher, I think, every single fight. The risks are, are getting higher, but by the same token, less meaningful. You know what I mean? Like the big names he's already beaten. He's already beaten all the legendary names where, cause, oh man, he could have knocked him off in his prime. He's already beaten all those guys, right? He's just taking up the, you know, the last two young bucks in a new era at 205 and somebody's going to catch him getting old. That's going to happen. The only two fights that really get me going now, I will watch obviously the Dominic Reyes fight. I'll watch whoever he fights. Um, the two that would really get me going, I would like to see a DC trilogy, maybe, depending on the circumstances. I want to feel that both guys really want it, and I'd like to see it. If it's if DC's if DC loses to Stipe and his heart's just not in it anymore, I don't want to see that. Right? Um, if he beats Stipe and his heart's not in it anymore, I don't want to see that. But two DC and John Jones both wanting it, both motivated, I'd want to see that again. Him versus Stipe. Should he go up to heavyweight? That would be a challenge that I would see as one of the crowning moments of his career should he win that fight. For argument's sake, Stipe beats DC, then he goes up to Stipe and tries to win a heavyweight title. That's a ring worth grabbing. That's a milestone that, okay, someone at that point in their career coming up in, to winning heavyweight. Um, Roy Jones Jr. defeating John Ruiz to win a heavyweight title, a minor heavyweight title, but a heavyweight title nonetheless, was a, a, a great finish, it should have been, to his career. but. That would be worth it to me. DC or Stipe? The last 12 minutes, we, we basically went over where John Jones is and have has been and, and, and I guess is going in a way. With, with all that kind of said, it's also making me wonder more and more if when the loss does happen, does this mean that you put a giant asterisk on it and say, well, you know, sure, they beat John Jones, but that wasn't John Jones of... 2012, 2013, and 2011. Are you to that point now where you're looking at the man's legacy and putting it in perspective that it's almost a foregone conclusion he will? I mean, I know the Matt Hamill loss is there, but I think a lot of people just overlook it due to the context. When, when the loss does come, are you going to look back and say this was more age and maybe lack of desire than anything John Jones physically decided? Yes. Yes, I, I think his legacy set. Whatever you think of John Jones has been set already. It's it's going to be time catching up with him. Losses, I mean, not losses, but fights and camps catching up with him. Um, I if he loses to Reyes, it, I, I depending on how he looks, obviously, um, you could easily say just the number of fights caught up with him. Some folks are in their prime at twenty five. Some are in their prime in their mid thirties. John Jones. In his last couple fights, Anthony Smith and Thiago Santos, obviously he won both of those fights, but he didn't look as sharp as he had in previous fights. It's not 2011 anymore. So I, I don't believe that any loss from here on out diminishes his, his legacy. And I think you can easily write any of them off to, you know, he just fought for too long, has been, been doing it at the elite level just too many times. Now, We'll see if that's the case. But in my, in my point of view, every fighter has their prime where they are at their best. They're super sharp. They look unbeatable. I think that for John Jones was 2011, 2012. I think, you know, we're certainly at the tail end of it, if not the end. Well, we do appreciate you guys checking this out. Obviously, as we've talked about, even though there is no UFC next week, we are going to continue to do a Monday show. I will speak once again on behalf of Jimmy and hope you guys all have a wonderful and safe, happy holiday with your family. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to this, and we'll be back very shortly with more commentary. We appreciate you taking